Good morning all. Today I'm going to play with radio frequencies, uh, particularly FM, frequency modulation. And I'm going to do it with this pair of items which actually came from the pound shop. The whole kit was one pound. It was one of those things you stumble across in the pound shop, um, which was obviously priced far higher originally, didn't sell and ended up in the pound shop. I mean, its value is far higher than a pound. This is a, a scanning FM radio. Uh, it takes three triple A's. It uh, does the usual FM frequency band, but it's got no tuning dial. All it's got is uh, a button that says reset and a button that says scan. Let's just briefly try it. And it should start scanning immediately, I hope. Now I seem to remember actually that downstairs here I have the most horrific FM reception. So maybe I'll get nothing. Well perhaps that's a good thing. Now the transmitter as I remember it is all discrete components so it'll be quite interesting to sort of probe various parts of the circuit with an oscilloscope to see uh, how transmitters work. This takes two AAAs, uh, it's too light for them to be in there. Actually this one comes apart really easily. No, they're not in there, so I have to find a couple of triple A's. Um, it has two frequencies. It has an off position, channel 1, channel 2, and the frequencies are 87.2 megs and 88.5 megs. Now they're both very low down on the FM band, uh, probably intentionally because then this thing will pick them up quite quickly once it starts scanning. So let's get some batteries in here, plug this into my PC, start playing some music from uh, YouTube's copyright free library and see if I can get the transmitter to, uh, well I was going to say talk to the receiver. I suppose that qualifies, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to use um, AAA nickel metal hydrides, always ready chameleon. can't remember where I got these. I think these might have been pound shop possibly. Let's put them in there and switch this thing on. Okay, well it is on, there's no LED, there's an LED in there. Uh, maybe that comes on when you actually start pushing music through it. So let's connect it to the PC and do that. Well, not having a lot of luck with this, I can um, reset that. But it doesn't seem to be picking up this, and the LED is not coming on on this. And I seem to remember I might have had trouble with this in the past. That LED's not coming on. I had this connected into the microphone socket of my PC initially, but it's definitely in the line out now. Could be that cable. Let's try a few things. Different cable and no, still nothing. I think I'm going to take the transmitter apart. It's not going to be a very good video if I can't get this to work, is it? In fact, it may not even see the light of day. So let's remind myself what's inside here. Ah, yes, there we are. One screw didn't come undone fully. Yes, a wonderfully all discrete circuit. Let's get in a bit closer. Uh, well, maybe it needs a higher voltage. So I've got some alkalines here. These are IKEA alkalines. Will they work? I'm not getting anything on that LED. What's going on? Well, I've discovered that I'm getting no power or voltage at the battery terminal connections. I'm getting 81 millivolts at the battery terminal connections. That's ridiculous. What's going on? Well, I've had to do a bit of fault finding on this and I found that it's one of those ridiculous situations where the positive terminal of the battery can't actually reach the piece of metal that it's designed to touch because some plastic extrusion pieces are holding it back. Let's get in a little bit closer. You can see these um, folded back pieces of uh, plastic holding the cell to the left and there is actually a tiny gap between the cell's positive terminal and this metal strip. So if I wedge a piece of metal into that gap, I've just got a bit of a pin here wedge that into that gap and we'll see if this thing now works. And now the LED has come on and if I rescan 
And that works. So finally, the transmitter is transmitting and the receiver is receiving. Now we're getting somewhere. That's really annoying, isn't it? And if I pull that out, the whole thing goes off because there's just no connection to that battery. So I'm going to shove a washer in there so that I can at least get the uh, battery cover back on this. So washer to the rescue. Let's put that in there. Does it work? Yes, that's on. Why has that lost its connection? Maybe the track has ended. No. Let's just play another one. Ah! What is going on with this nonsense? Success! For some reason the scanning radio wasn't scanning. Hmm. Now what's happened? Well now at least I've got some sort of consistent working on this thing. Oh, what's that? If I scan, reset. So that's on the first channel. If I now push it up to the second channel, the additional scan, this thing is now working, picking up the two channels. Back to the first channel, of course scan won't work because it's going forwards in scanning, higher frequencies. Press reset and it picks it up again. The track's just ended now. Right, I've got my scope out now. Now this oscilloscope is actually a 60 megahertz oscilloscope. So are we going to see the 88 megahertz uh, FM RF output? And interestingly here on 10 nanoseconds per division, now 10 nanoseconds, what would that be? Well, that would be 100 megahertz. So that must be the RF output. Now it's frequency modulated. It does seem to be bouncing around, but it should be varying in frequency, but perhaps it varies so little. And of course it's varying it at an audio frequency that you're not gonna see the variations. But what else can we see? Let's take a look at the audio input. Well, I think that's the audio input. I'm now on five milliseconds per division on the scope. The problem with this scope is that the trace isn't very bright. Now that's uh, obviously too fast. Well that's clearly audio. If I mute the audio briefly. Yes, that goes to zero. Start the audio again. So that's the audio coming in on the uh, connector at the top. Let's look at some other points. Well now here's something interesting. I'm obviously getting some sort of carrier and it does look like it's being modulated by something. I've just picked an arbitrary point which I happen to be able to get my scope on but that does look interesting. It does look like there's a high frequency there which is that and that's flat out on my scope five nanoseconds. The music's just ended but I'm only getting it at one specific setting on my scope. There it's not very visible at 100 microseconds getting this sort of modulated carrier thing any faster and you can't see it again. So that's interesting. Is that the modulated carrier? How do you look at FM signals on an oscilloscope? I don't really know. Now something really weird happens. I'll turn the music up a little bit. If I mute the audio, it does that. So is this some sort of um, scope artifact? That's really odd. Turn the audio back on and we get that modulated signal. Turn it off and we get this varying frequency within the carrier. I honestly don't know what I'm looking at there. Now if I do the same thing again with the frequency of the scope one step higher, mute it, you still get this, it's an aliasing effect of some sort, but it's one thing aliasing against something else. That's really strange. I wasn't expecting to see anything like that. Weird. Now I find another point on one side of a diode, which is clearly clipped. Um, I'm getting 
essentially a square wave modulated by something but I don't really know how to trigger the scope to get anything really sensible to view. If I mute that, that just goes to nothing, so it's clearly modulated by the audio. And this is great fun, but I'm not sure I'm learning very much at all. Really. Hmm, let's try and find some other points. Music's ended. Let's try another track. Now this point here, if I touch it with the scope, it just kills the output. So that point is obviously so sensitive that even the scope's input impedance is just killing it. Oh, now this thing has wandered off frequency. Ah, this receiver is a real nuisance. I think it's having trouble being so close to the scope. But... Yeah, I'm just having problems getting it to lock on to the frequency of the transmitter. Probably be better not having a scanning receiver. So wind up FM radio to the rescue, it's switched to FM. That's working fine and that won't wander off frequency. So let's touch this point again. Ah, the track's ended. New track. Yeah, so that cuts it off. So does that. Oh, that seems to change the frequency if I look at that point. Let's scope that point. That looks quite interesting. Well, this is very weird. Now when I change the frequency of the scope... No, oh, it's not doing it now. Ah! Now I think this is the modulated carrier and if I turn the music off just pause it I think this is the AGC varying the frequency of the carrier because if I leave it the frequency keeps changing and now the noise level on the receiver comes up to full so I think this is um, the frequency that the um, RF frequency being modulated by the auto gain control. Let's turn the music back on. And you can hear that AGC is pushed right down. Turn it off. The carrier frequency is changing. I wonder if I can see that at the carrier frequency level, at this level. I'll try and get frequency onto the uh, scope. Yes, not sure about this, but let's watch the whole sequence. I'll kill the music. There's no frequency information on the scope here. It can't calculate it. I'm not sure if you can read that anyway. I'm not even sure if I can see this frequency changing particularly. This now goes very loud. And if I leave it, it goes quieter again. And the amplitude of this carrier seems to be dropping now. And if I just leave it, it just drops more and more. And then some frequencies appear. 60, 59, 50, 39 megs, 22 megs, 6 megs. And then it flatlines. What is all that? I honestly don't know. Let's put the music back on. And away we go again to... Uh, a modulated carrier. Well, it's all good fun. I don't know what I'm looking at, to be honest. So, well, there's a bit of fun with um, an FM transmitter. I mean, maybe I should um, reverse engineer the circuit on this so I can at least see what's happening. Uh, the two channels. Oh, oh, that's interesting. That gets very noisy when you switch it to the other channel. Uh, transmitting to an FM radio, my wind-up radio in this case, because actually the radio that came with this, the auto scan one, is a pain to use because it keeps jumping off frequency. And an oscilloscope, which does appear to be able to see the uh, 88 megahertz signal. But uh, what can we conclude from all this? Probably that I don't know much about RF. Cheerio.